Welcome to EduSkills. OED made easy. Our mission is to make you fall in love with OED, the whole learning process. And if you're watching this on YouTube, kindly consider subscribing to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like our work. And please do share the video to others so that we reach out to many, especially those financially struggling to crack OED. Also share your comments in the comment space so that we customize our next sessions according to your need and requirements and today this is the first session majority of uh, your beginners so we'll be just giving you a basic idea uh, as a foundation let me share my screen. when we are traveling on long haul flights several things happen first of all we are stationary we are not moving our legs so there is no physiological compression of the cough muscles. Blood tends to stick in the veins and may clot. Number two, the environment is dry. We dehydrate. We may drink some alcohol. We dehydrate even further. Alcohols as a diuretic agent and it results in as actually drying out. And that makes the blood a little bit thicker and stickier and these factors leading to clotting. Thank you. Any any medical condition that you can presume from this background, from this paragraph? DVT will happen. Deep vein, deep vein thrombosis, right? Thrombosis. thrombosis. Yes, Father. Okay, great. Yeah. That's how you have to visualize. Whenever you read something or listen to an audio, you have to visualize a scenario. Most of the scenarios are very familiar to you because you are in the health professional setting. And the things will be about some conditions, some disease, some disorders. So definitely you should be able to uh, visualize the whole thing. For example, uh, the whole uh, haul flights, when you are traveling on long haul flights, you can just visualize the flight and you are sitting inside the flight and all those things. What I want to just to tell you maybe within uh, five, six minutes is this. Every paragraph will have a topic sentence. Okay. And you... The topic sentence will help you to find the gist or the message or what is the summary of the whole paragraph. So just by reading the first sentence, mostly this paragraph, this topic sentence are in the beginning of a paragraph. Sometimes it can be the second sentence or at the end. Rarely it can be at the end, but then sometimes it can be. Now here, when we are traveling on long haul flights, several things happen is the topic sentence. Okay. This is the topic sentence. So what is the topic? Tra tra traveling to... by flight. Oh, traveling. Yeah. Traveling, traveling by flight is the traveling by topic. flight is the topic. Yeah. That is the general topic. But does uh, traveling by flight, you can speak maybe uh, thousands of pages you can write about traveling on flights. But what is this paragraph concerned about? It says about particularly what will happen while, while we yeah. are on flight. Yeah, several things happen, right? Several yeah. things happen. Several things happen. So what is expected in the paragraph when you hear several things happen while you travel by flights? Some dehydration. Dehydration. Yeah. yeah, one or two. Several things means more than one thing will be there, right? Yeah. So you have to see first, second, third will happen. Now, first of all, but first of all is known as the sequential expression. First of all, then you have Number two, this is in a conversational style. First of all, we are stationary. So this is known as the first sentence is known as the topic sentence. And several things happen is known as the controlling idea. Controlling idea of the paragraph. What are the things that's going to happen during the long haul flights is the controlling idea. Now, first of all, what happens? That is known as the supporting sentence. This explains whatever comes next will explain what happens during long haul flights? They said several things will happen. They have to explain it. What are those several things? One, two. So you have stationary. Yeah, stationary means. Can you just um, identify the synonym or synonymous expressions of stationary in the next sentence? No, I'm okay, you are right. We are uh, not, not moving. moving. Yeah, we are not not moving. Okay, mm -hmm. not moving means no. stationary. Then no physiological compression of the yeah heart. no physiological compression means stationary. Next sentence. Blood tends to blood sit tends to sit in the veins. Clotting. Okay, sit. Yeah, sit. Yes, sit in the blood clotting yes. or again clot 
See, all these expressions are the synonymous or synonyms of stationary. So when they said first topic sentence, they want to explain it, then they are going into explanation. First of all, we are stationary. What does it mean? The developing sentence. Ne the next two sentences are called developing sentences, illustrating or demonstrating why they said we are stationary. We are not moving our legs. We are stationary means we are not moving our legs. So there is no physiological compression of the calf muscles. The next sentence, blood tends to sit in the veins and make clot, sit and clot. So what happens in OET or any of the competitive exams, they will be asking a question on these things about this paragraph. So if they are asking something about stationary or a synonym of it, they will use, may not use the same word. One of the synonyms of stationary in the question, you know, immediately you have in the first part of the paragraph, you have the answer. Then you need not re read the rest of the part. And now number two, the environment is dry. What is the keyword in the number two? Second factor. Environment is dry. Dry. Yeah, what is, what is the keyword is dry, okay? Dry. Yeah, environment is dry is the key phrase. Okay, now let me give me from the rest of the paragraph, give me the synonyms or synonymous expressions of a dry. Dehydrate. Dehydrate. Yes, dehydrate. Drying out. Yeah, we Dry dehydrate out. again. You have dehydrate here. Then Dry, drying out. Drying out. Then. Before that, diuretic agents. Diuretic agents. Then drying out. Thicker and thicker. Yeah, yeah. Thicker, thicker, thicker and thicker, 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 thicker again. Thicker. Blood being thicker and thicker means drying. Clotting. And yeah, clotting. See how beautifully it is written. And what happens, you know, when you look into the question statement. That will be concerned about stationary or dry or the synonyms or synonyms expressions. As soon as uh, the you find a, a expression or synonym or synonymous of dry in your question statement, you need not read the first portion of the paragraph. Immediately you come to the dry. When you skim, you will find out. When several things happen, immediately you know one is stationary. First of all, then it should be next or number two. Immediately what you have to find out is dry. You know, the synonyms are continuously used in your sentences throughout the taste, color, smell, and the texture of that particular topic word or keyword of each supporting sentence is repeatedly used in the paragraph. That's how you beat the time. This is how you analyze when you start your training. This is how you analyze the reading text at the same time, uh, the audio in the listening, as well as you have to write such beautiful cohesive and coherent paragraphs in your writing letter. And also when you speak, you have to speak with this particular cohesion in your, uh, in your communication. Or when you speak uh, to the uh, patient or to the guardian, whoever it is, you have to give it very clearly. You should start with a topic sentence. Then you have to explain that particular statement, what you made. Okay, if they ask something about, about they have some query about the medication, you have to say, Maybe this is very common or they are complaining about their pain or some other issues. Then you, can, you make a statement they're saying that it's very common in all the people are suffering from this condition. Then you have to explain when you say very common. Why did you say very common? And don't worry. So you'll be explaining that. And what are, the, uh, what are the going to be the consequences of that? So let there be some connection between all these things. So ultimately, look at a paragraph. Look, look at a text and identify the topic sentence, the supporting sentence, the developing sentences. Now you may have some confusions. We'll be giving you tasks and detail explanations will happen in the later stage. Don't worry, we'll come to the Q&A as well, but then let's just go through some slides. Now I said, whatever it is, whether it is reading, listening, speaking, writing, try to visualize the situation, okay? Now you know the topic sentence is there. Then controlling idea, several things happen. That is the focus of the paragraph. Gist of the paragraph, you can understand the gist from this focus. And list of, uh, when they say several things happen, it says list some of the things that happen, raise the points one by one and discuss them in detail. That's what happens in the paragraph. This is how it looks. Topic sentence, first sentence, then you have supporting sentence one, then you have developing sentence one, developing sentence two. Then again, you have the supporting sentence two, then we have developing sentence one, developing sentence two. See the beauty of the paragraph. So you should be able to look 
into or uh, scan the whole paragraph in this way. This all details about it. First of all, we are stationary. Number two, the environment is there. This indicates it is the second factor in its argument. Usually, we don't use next in uh, our professional or academic expressions. Last reason can be used as last year. Finally, the details are not required now. See, several things happen. First of all, stationary. The synonyms used or synonymous expressions, not moving, no physiological compression, sit, clot. And number two, dry, dehydrate, dehydrate, diuretic, and drying out, recurrent stickia, and clotting. How beautifully the uh, uh, details are given there. Now you can see here, see here, topic sentence, first sentence, then you have the controlling idea, several things happen. Then you have sequential expression, first of all, and number two. Then you have synonyms or synonymous expressions being used, not moving and all those things, we have seen it. Then you have a model verb used. For example, blood tends to sit in the veins and make clot. The, the question statement may be, or the answer option could be something like that. Uh, during long haul uh, flights, blood will clot, or blood will sit in the veins and will clot. Is it right? During long haul flights, blood tends to sit in the veins and it will clot, blood will clot. No, am I right? No no further. Why? Because it is a definitely it will happen. So it yeah, costs yeah. when we will use will. Yeah. yeah, model verb is used here. May. May means may happen, may not happen. Oh. It is not sure. Yeah. May die, may not die. Okay. So it's not sure. But when you say it will happen, there is a categorical factual statement. So they might give a opinion statement in the text and a factual statement, the question statement or answer options to confuse you. So it should be aware of the model verbs being used. Now I have given you only this uh, one per one topic uh, supporting sentence details. Rest are the same. If you go into the next one, number two, sequential expression you have, then you have uh, again may drink, we may drink. There is one more, one more may drink, model verb, diuretic, all those things are there. That's the same expression. So this is cause and effect language is being used here. I'll explain it. See, cause, we are not moving our legs is the cause. What is the effect? So there is no physiological compression of the cough muscle. muscle. Okay. okay, so that is the effect. Now what happens in the question? They will give you the effect as the cause and cause as the effect to confuse you. Definitely there are questions on cause and effect language. So beware of those expressions and don't be confused. I'll give you uh, typical examples in the coming sessions from our own reading passages and listening audios and their script. So cause, effect. See. This is the cause, this is the effect. In the question statement or answer options, they will give you effect as the cause and cause as the effect. That's how they confuse you. Now, physiological compression of the calf muscle. So what happened? Blood tends to sit in the veins and may clot. Now they have given cause in one paragraph, one sentence. Next paragraph, uh, next sentence, short sentence gives the effect. When there is no physiological compression of the calf muscles, because of that, the effect is blood tends to sit in the veins and may clot. So blood tends to sit in the vein and blood clotting is the result or the effect of no physiological compression of calf muscles. We may drink some alcohol and it results in us actually drying out. You see, the word used is results, leads to or results. So cause is here, drinking alcohol effect is drying out more. Again, one more drinking out, drinking alcohol results in us actually drying out. So drinking alcohol effect is drying out. Drinking alcohol makes the blood a little bit thicker and sticker. Cause and effect. See how beautifully that sentence are given. So there are different types of texts, like uh, cause and effect text, persuasive text, um, argumentative text, classification text. So you should know the nature of the text. Then definitely you know what type of questions will emerge or appear in the question statement. Immediately you can predict the answers without any difficulty. That's how you defeat the time and drinking alcohol leads to clotting see cause and effect uh, drinking alcohol is the cause leads to clotting leads makes results all these are so these are the expressions being used to show cause and effect language this is helpful when scanning a passage for general or specific information because it can pinpoint on where exactly to focus for answers immediately you are able to swoop into the location where the answer is so you do not read the whole uh, text or the paragraph to Identify the answers. You know, the biggest enemy in OET is your time. You have to defeat the time. So these are the tactics immediately to identify the 
answers just by skimming, not scanning. Skimming means just overall reading, reading the main points, tied headings, or maybe the names, or the numbers, or the years, or what you call percent or percentage of those things. Okay, the topic sentence is usually the first sentence of the paragraph. Okay, and remember when the question is based on the gist of the text or paragraph, the topic sentence reflects the gist of the paragraph. Definitely in reading part C and listening part C, you have gist questions, questions based on gist of the text. Can somebody select the good topic sentence among these options? Paragraph uh, fitness, well, first topic is fitness. Walking is beneficial, walking improves the benefit. Fitness of adults, exercise improves fitness. You have to choose one topic sentence to write a paragraph about fitness. Walking is, Walking is beneficial. Walking is beneficial. Okay. Let's see. Check one. The second one. Television. Watching television is harmful. Violence on television is harmful to children. Television is harmful. Uh, violence on television is harmful to children. Okay. Okay, drinking. Drinking is inappropriate. Drinking is dangerous. Underage drinking is dangerous for several reasons. Drinking is dangerous. Drinking is dangerous. Let's check. Mm -hmm. See, walking is beneficial for whom? So it's very general. Walking is beneficial is very for general. All. You'll not be able to explain. Beneficial for what, whom, when, how. So the correct topic sentence is walking improves the fitness of adults. So definitely you'll be able to say what adults, how they have to use. Exercise improves fitness. It's also very general. No clear focus. Controlling idea is not there. Paragraph television, watching television is harmful. It's very general. Harmful for whom, what, and television is harmful. Television is not harmful, right? Television never harms. So violence on television is harmful to children. See, specifically, what is harmful? Violence is harmful to whom? To children. So there is a focus of the paragraph. So the violence in the television and its impact, result or effect, on children. So immediately you're not looking at the topic sentence, you know what type of uh, language they will use. Violence on television is harmful to children. What type of language they will use? What is violence? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. means violence is violence is cause, right? And yeah. harmful effects on children will be the result. So there will be continuously, as I shown you, cause and effect language will be there as soon as you look at in the question statement or the options where you see a cause and the effect immediately you have to identify which is which. That's it. And drinking, drinking is inappropriate. Drinking is dangerous. For whom? Underage drinking is dangerous for uh, several reasons. One, two, three. Reasons will be given in the paragraph. Now this one, try smoking. The effects of smoking cigarettes are detrimental. Smoking cigarettes is bad. Smoking is harmful. The effect of smoking cigarettes are detrimental. The effects of smoking are harmful. Okay, good health. Next one, fourth one. Good health is important. Good health depends on eating vegetables. Good health depends on a nutritious diet. Good health depends on a nutritious diet. Okay. Yeah, can you give me an, a, a statement which you remember very often you use, equivalent to this third option? In both the cases, you are right. An Not apple a day? Balanced diet. An apple a day? Doctor, keep, doctor, doctor, keep away. Keeps the doctor away. Yeah, what does what is the meaning of it? If you eat one apple, if you eat one apple every day, all the hospitals can be closed down and no, nurses will not have health professionals will not have job employment. <laughs> is that the meaning? No. An, ap an apple yeah. a day keeps the doctor away. What does it mean? It will keep new cases. Yeah. A balanced, a balanced diet keeps you healthy. That's the meaning. A balanced diet. Keeps you, keeps you healthy. healthy. The paragraph structure, it contains group of sentences developing one main idea, main idea or topic. Three parts of a paragraph. Simply, I will not be explaining now. First part is topic sentence, I told you. Then supporting sentences. Then developing sentences. Then usually there is a link or concluding sentence. But in OET, it's not a very important thing. Always we don't have it. But in IELTS and TOEFL, definitely you must have it. But here it's not very common. Okay, so the topic sentence is communicates the subject of the paragraph. What is the subject of the paragraph? We can understand from the topic sentence. Normally, it is the first sentence of the paragraph. It is the most important sentence of the paragraph. You have to understand the topic sentence, otherwise you will not understand the paragraph. It controls the ideas in the sentence that follow. Contains the topic of the paragraph. What is idea, opinion, attitude? That will be understood from the topic sentence. You have questions on idea, opinion, and attitude in your part C, reading and listening. 
okay the controlling idea because it limits the topic to a specific subject the idea of opinion or attitude is called the controlling idea because it limits to a specific area of the vast subject for example small cars are economical to maintain small cars are economical if you say that it's very general so maintenance of small cars so topic is small cars uh, are economical controlling idea is to maintain maintenance of small cars so it is controlled idea is controlled can you just identify the topic sentence uh, the uh, what you call the topic and the controlling idea in these sentences snowboarding is a challenging sport that is the topic then controlling idea specific curriculum yeah specific requirements specific so this is requirement. yeah if if this is the topic sentence the paragraph will tell you one two three four requirements any numbers one can it can be two or three or yeah specific requirement nothing else will be there in the paragraph only the specific nothing about snowboarding other issues or the details of the snowboarding sport only the requirements then next one television commercials several reasons are controlling idea yeah television commercials are the to is the topic and it's annoying is the topic for several reasons so what will be explained there one two three four what will be the explanation reasons one reason two reason three reason four so definitely you know looking at the question statement and the options you know they are thinking about the first reason or second reason or third reason immediately swoop into that point and find the answer and just go forward third one the retirement village the retirement village Yeah. As many benefits. Benefit. Yeah, the retirement village is the topic. Benefits to the elderly is the benefits. So what will be given? Benefits number one. One first benefit, second benefit, third benefit. Yeah, beautiful. Then topic is English speaking. Advantages of learning English. Any advantages of learning English? Yeah. Yeah, many advantages of learning English is the topic. And in an English speaking country, not anywhere else. Only. where the people are native speakers of english not in india okay specifically what are the advantages in a english speaking country so the control idea is controlled next one top air pollution is the topic yeah harmful to earth ozone layer the particular is yeah. ozone layer yeah damage or harm to the earth's ozone layer is the controlling idea pollution can be harmful to animals harmful to human beings anybody but then here they it is restricted to ozone layer earth's ozone layer that is the controlling idea see controlling idea topic you have correctly answered all these things pakka this is what we are dealing with today when you visualize you can visualize the flight and other things you can visualize this picture as well do you paint thrombosis is where a clot forms in the calf veins and occasionally in the veins of the leg so the definition of a deep vein thrombosis is deep vein thrombosis is a condition where a clot forms in the calf veins the, this has got five this is just for your interest okay this definition has got five parts first one is the name of the condition okay deep vein thrombosis this is the verb is a condition is the class to which this particular name we got belongs where is the connective word a clot forms in the calf vein so means the description or the characteristics or functions of the particular thing for example if i speak of my computer laptop how do we define name is the computer verb is is it a condition what class to which class it belongs machine or connective word is stores and pro pro processes data so five parts or you define an accountant an accountant is the name is is the verb what is the uh, class to which an accountant belongs individual an individual or a person connective word who analyzes and evaluates accounts his function so five things just to know that every sentence everything has got clear cut meaning and beautiful things okay so definitely you can understand this is just an idea for you then we'll get into the discussions if you have this microscopic scopic eye into you are reading and listening things audios and uh, text you are simply you will simply talk but it takes time in the initial stage it will take some time you need patience okay today vaibhavi mm -hmm. congratulations somebody was thanking you in the youtube comment saying that you added her and definitely yeah. she is very grateful and all that yeah i read yeah. it thank you thank you for your empowering attitude